Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I have received these Nova watercolour markers. All of the design team got these and also a selection of the alcohol markers. So I've already shared that video and I'll link that one up here if that's something you're interested in. So they're really nice and I've been using them behind the scenes. I use them on a lot of my commission work now as well. So it's nice to have something else to play around with. But I am a huge watercolour fan. It's what I've done since school. It's what I just find to be very easy for me because I've done it for so long. So I do like using pens. You have a lot more control with a, with a pen as opposed to just using a pan of watercolour or actually a tube of watercolour paint and a paintbrush. But that's something that I've done, like I said, through, through school and i done A-level art. So that was what I used um, a lot. So, but... For anybody that wants to get the effects of watercolour and don't want to go down the paint route, then pens are perfect for that. So I've already swatched the brights out and they are really vibrant. For watercolour as well, that's not hard to do because there's lots of it out there, but generally you get um, a lot more of a lighter shade with watercolour because that's the, you know, that's the, the purpose of it. It's that much softer medium to use. But if you go into it in its raw form without adding the water, you can keep that richness of the colour, which you'll see there. So on the left is all the just the, the, the raw colour. OK, so nothing's been added to that. And then slowly here you can see where I've started to introduce the water. So they are really nice. They, they you know, they... Um, they dissolve really well in the water. You ca you have to, I would say, don't leave them too long because they will just settle into the watercolour paper and th then you will have, can you see there, I've slightly got like a line? That's not a bad thing, but if that's something you don't like, then I'd say that you don't want to lay this down, go away and do something and come back to it again. You're not going to get all of the pigment to dissolve as you would if you'd done it instantly, which is what I'll show you in a moment. But nonetheless, it's still really, really nice. Um, I love these colours here. I think they're beautiful, really, really rich. This one as well. The greens, you get two nice kind of tones. That's more of a limey green. But I think for the brights, you get a really nice mix there. And especially if you're someone that just loves bright colours, then this is a perfect pack. Because generally with watercolour markers, you get your browns, you get your, you know, a black and things like that. So it's quite nice not to have that and just have these really kind of um, rich colours. But you do have the option to get them if you wanted to with the neutrals. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and swatch and go through all that. I want to get right into creating a card. So I've just got my, one of my water brushes here. You can use a normal paintbrush. So you get dual tip, so you get your brush nib, which is this one. And they are extremely, I've already been using these by the way, so they are extremely pointy, like very, very pointy. I don't think my other ones, I mean, I might do a comparison video with all of these because I've got about five or six different watercolor brush pens, but this one just stood out to me as being incredibly pointy so it's perfect to get into all those little details and then the other end is just your kind of bullet it's like a felt tip kind of end there you can see so yeah standard kind of pen in that sense um so let's just start using them so what i went ahead and done is had a play around first of all so i stamped out these images here they're beautiful they're the ones that i was really excited to get from the i can't remember what magazine it must have been creative stamping and it's the Christmas Florals by Pink Fresh Studios. So I've just pulled out a selection there and then just kind of played around with them on here. And I thought I'd try and colour that like a Halloween house, even though it's got a little wreath there. You can, I could put a, like a, I could do like a black bat over that. And I think that looks quite cool. So I might turn that into a card and maybe do three more and have like a haunted house. But I love these markers. Look at them. Look at the effects you can get. I think it looks really, really nice. I wanted to create like a, so I had the highlight on the top, so it almost looks like the flowers are curved. Um, you can see here just where I've kind of used the two greens together. And then what I've done there is I've just coloured it with just the red, and then I went over it with the dry pen, so I didn't add any water, just to create that darker depth. Same here, just to keep that kind of real darker blue there. I just went into it dry, didn't add any water. And then here, just love it. Really, really like them. I mean, again, I hope you can agree just how vibrant those colours are. So what I have done, I've got the same image again, and I have stamped it on this piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So it's going to sit on a red five by seven card base, so you'll have a nice red border. And I've used my gold in bottom powder, so I've used the Paper Maniac gold. Okay, and this is a really fun way to use watercolours. If you're someone that is maybe first time using them and you're worried about the control of the water, if you stamp your image with an embossing powder, 
the image will obviously have the raised edges from the embossing powder so it will create like a little barrier so whatever you colour, so say I was to colour like yellow here, it's not going to bleed into these sections here. So it's quite easy to control the water. So maybe give it a go if it's your first time, try colouring a stamped image that's embossed. Because like I said, because it's raised, it will act as a little bit of a barrier. So I've already gone ahead and stamped some more of them on here because I'm going to do like a decoupage. So I'm going to fussy cut these and then have them, you know, a bit more 3D on top of this. I'm going to put a nice sentiment in the, in the middle and you'll see all that at the end. Also, if you are using watercolour, Versafine is really, really good to use. Just make sure it's completely dry, but you don't get any bleed and you get that crisp black. You can also use this one, which is the Nouveau Hybrid. However, I don't find the black to be as intense. So if you want to keep that real crisp black, I still love the vest fine with watercolours. Okay, so I'll pop those two there. Okay, so just coming a bit closer there. So I've already, like I said, gone ahead and done this because I just didn't think you needed to watch me stamp that. If you do want to see me do embossing, check out my embossing video here. Sorry, I forget I'm zoomed in. It's just up there. Um, because there's lots of really good, useful tips on there to get great results when you're heat embossing. So colours for this, I want to do the reds again because it's Christmassy, so I'm going to do the reds and the greens um, and that's probably it. So I'm just going to use these three colours. I want to check I have got the red there. Yeah, that's the red. Um, so basically what all I'm going to do is I, I don't want to leave it sitting for long, so I want to be able to make sure that all of the pigment dissolves and becomes a water colour. So I'm just going to start on this one here. It doesn't matter if you go over the gold because it will resist against it. It's almost like water off of a duck's back, you know, it's like an oily kind of effect. So I've just done a really deep red there and actually I'm going to do a deeper red on the ends here as well. But I'm just going to leave a white section in the middle there. And then I'm just going to add the water and just start to pull that colour and come up here like so. So just get it to join. I'm not really touching this. You notice I'm just touching the ends here. And then if you just come back along here with a bit more of a drier brush. So I've just got my old rag that I like to use. Okay. And then again, just kind of bleed a little bit more of that colour and just let it kind of run into the water and it will do its own thing. And that's the nice thing about watercolour. You just have to move it a little bit. There we go. So I want to keep this kind of highlight here because once I do that on everything, again, it should give the illusion that the flowers are kind of curved. So I'm going to carry on with that same way on the rest of these and I'm going to do that one up there as well so I'm just going to speed that piece up Okay, so that's those coloured and doesn't it look like the light's like hitting here and it just gives the, it's, well to me it looks like that one is very 3D, it looks like it's just curved over and that one there as well. I think it's, it's such a simple technique just joining, you know, just having dark at both ends and then just leaving a little bit of light and you can keep going in and just, like I said, just dry off your brush and just, just pick up the colour. Next, I wanna use the green. So I wanna go in with the lighter one first and then I'm gonna use the darker one to add, again, that depth and shadow. Now, I am gonna do these red in a minute as well, but I thought I'd leave them for a minute and do the green leaves just so you can kind of see that. So again, you can really see, this is, this is quite a detailed image, but because of the point on this, I can go right in here. It's brilliant, it really is. So I'm actually gonna end up covering all of this with the lighter green first, and then I'm gonna go in with the darker so I'm just going to cover most of that again. I don't want to leave it sitting there too long. These are green as well. And that one there. And I think, I oh know that's not there, so we'll leave that. So again, just make sure I've cleaned that off and then just start to dilute the colour. 
you're just dissolving it and again I want to keep actually no I want to do that same effect so to get that I'm just going to lift a line just kind of lighter through the middle there you kind of see what I've done yeah I'm just lifting it just there it will all kind of work out in a minute these ones I'm not really going to bother they can just stay green all over do that one there and I'm just going to do this one here Okay, so I'm going to go back to this one again, and now I'm going to come in with that darker green. I just want to focus on the bottoms of all of these little leaves here. And if it's still wet enough, it will slowly start to just, I can see this is already starting to bleed in, so I might not even have to end up doing anything to that. I might just let it just move and do its own thing. And then again, down here, a bit darker there, and I also want to do darker there. And then do a little bit there, and that, and again. So you see it's starting to move, I don't know how well you're seeing this, but all I'm going to do is just dab it, and it will just do its own thing. Like I said, you do have a lot more control with a pen. And you can also go into this wet you don't you know it's up to you how you do it I've, well I've gone on dry but now you can go in wet as well so if I just wanted to keep this still quite dark down here I can keep dipping this into the actual water there and it will just move and do its own thing so you can see that I've got a really nice little blend put a bit more around here just help it along there but you need such a tiny amount of water so it dries very quick. There we go. I'm going to come back around here. I'm going to do exactly the same again. Okay, so that's that. And then with the berries, I just went over the whole thing. And I'm just going to go over them all, kind of lifting some of the colour. Just create a little bit of a shadow. I'm just kind of adding water just to a little bit and you should see it just stays darker is that picking up yeah it is you can see where it's lighter there where I've picked it up or added the water and it's still darker there you don't have to do that at all but that's just me just keeping everything kind of matching and if you go over the lines you can pick it up just make sure you've got a clean brush so it's that one again I'm going to do all this here Okay, if I just bring that up just so you can see. See where I've just got darker there and then slightly lighter. But it looks so, so nice. So, using that same technique, I'm now going to do all the rest of this red. These flowers here red. I'm going to fussy cut the ones that I've already done on here. And then I'm going to go back in with the raw colour without adding water just to add a bit more depth to it. But I'll do that when I'm back. So I decided I was playing around with my sentiment and I decided to use the stamped image that came with the stamp set So I've just used the Merry Christmas there and popped it there But I'm going to put a few sequins kind of here and I'm unsure whether to use these because I don't know I just think they're just going to cover up Because I don't really like them just floating like that. I'd rather have them like Set like I don't know. I just I don't think I want to use them so once I put it on the actual card I may well do but I just want to go in and just add a little bit of depth to a few areas. So bring you nice and close again. I'm just going to go into the berries and just kind of just cover half of the berry with the dry pigment. And it will again just give the illusion that you know the light's hitting from one side. 
Can you see there? Again, you don't have to do these things, it's just little ways to add a bit more depth. So then do a few little flicks as well. And that's the nice thing with these, you can get some really thin little lines. See? Like so, it looks lovely. Really, really like this. This is why I was so eager to get this stamp set because this is the kind of card I wanted to create. Again, just going to keep it nice and dark in the corners here. And you can always go back in again with the water, so if you feel like you've gone then too dark, you might have too much of a kind of solid line, then you can obviously do so. But just let it dry in between and you will be fine. Like so, I really like that one. And then these I'm just going to do just a kind of circle in the centre there because there isn't really any other. That was where I, those were to go over. Maybe if I take the white off, don't have a little border and just have it right over there, maybe it kind of hanging over the side of the card, I might try that. You'll see that at the end if I decide to. So I'm just going to do the same what I've done there over this side. And I'm going to do the same with the green, just right at the very ends there, and then the very bottoms, and the very bottom of all these leaves. Okay, there you have it. I think it looks beautiful. In fact, I'm not going to do anything more with it. I don't think I'm even going to add these. I think I'll keep them for something else, because I just think that looks absolutely stunning. So I've just got a red 5x7 card blank. I think I'm going to stick this using some foam because it's slightly warped, ever so slightly. I could just flatten that if I just pop it in a book overnight, run it through my dye machine a few times, which I might try doing, but you do have to be careful with the dye machine because it can kind of flatten the embossing powder and actually does, just makes it quite dull and you kind of lose a little bit of that shine, so I probably won't do that. I'm just going to pop it on some foam and just stick it on like so. Okay, so I've just realised I didn't do the inside still, so I'm just going to pop just some yellow just down. I'm not going to add any water because there's such tiny little um, dots there. You wouldn't, you know, it's not going to make any difference. I'm just going to pop some yellow. I think that'd be quite nice, like so. And then I'm just going to add a few of my. I want to get the clear the iridescent um, sequins there get my words out, so I'm just going to pop one there, 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 there. I want to keep them quite close to the, the flower. Let's try those for the minute. Okay, and there is the finished card. I think it looks gorgeous. Love the way the, the light catches that embossing powder. And like I said, these here, they just look, they almost look like they're like satin fabric. They just look so shiny. So I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. So that was on a 5x7 card. And um, yeah, it's really, really straightforward to do. Just, you know, focus your darker colours on the inside there and on the outside and then kind of bring them together. And you'll get that lovely highlight effect. Or just keep it dark on the end, in the centre there, and just pull the colour out. So you get it, you know, just kind of fading towards the ends there. There's lots of ways to do these, but I just thought that was a fun way to show you. I love all these. I think I'll fussy cut them and use them on the card. I'll probably do that as a kind of bundle on something. And then this one as well. But yeah, they're really vibrant, really easy to use, lovely colours. So these are, I think they're 9 99 on Amazon. I'll share the links below. So you get the pack of 10, the brights or the rainbows, and then the neutrals. So I'll share all those links below. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope again you've managed to get something from it. <laughs> um, if you've got watercolour pens and you've not used them, go and give them a go. Just have some fun with it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. So, and I will be back again soon with another tutorial. See you soon. Bye.